I can't help but think in recent years that ASAP Rocky's kind of star overall has kind of diminished some somewhat slightly because, you know, obviously more artists have come up and popped up during that time. You know, if you think about it, when ASAP Rocky and kind of Odd, or ASAP Mob and Odd Future started, they were sort of like the first two groups of kind of quote unquote weirdo black kids to come out who weren't thugs. Um, who weren't gang bangers, right? Who were just kind of promoting this kind of alternative image of what it meant to be young, black, and involved in hip hop, right? ASAP Mob more um, along the kind of um, Harlem fashion based side of things, and Old Future mostly based on the kind of alternative, maybe skateboard influence side of things. Um, but nowadays, you see a lot of more artists who are kind of have those interests coming up in the scene, and some of them have been able to kind of learn the lessons, avoid the pitfalls that those two artists or those two groups of people. Um, went through in their careers and they'll be able to flourish but outside of that i think if you look at precisely asap rock and travis scott it seems like there was a time in there was a place in time where they were both sort of competing maybe for the same sort of customer the same sort of maybe listener um, the same sort of fan but it seems like in recent years with travis scott you know um, lending his side lending himself to more lending himself to producing most things um appearing as a guest on more tracks um maybe being a little bit more open to collaboration in general with some of the people that are involved in the scene, maybe a little bit more commercially minded. It seemed like he's he's kind of overstepped or kind of kind of pulled away from Rocky. Not to say Rocky's kind of stars diminished, but I say maybe pulled away is maybe a little bit more of a good representation of it, of where like Rocky's been able to kind of stay consistent in his own little bubble. But I think overall as a project to project, if you compare them, I don't think anyone could say that, you know, I don't think testing came anywhere close to um, doing what, um travis scott reg, um, recent album did i think even testing i think for the most part maybe praise the lord and a couple other tracks outside of that i, I haven't really played it um again so far and that's not really been something that you can kind of say about rocky and obviously watching him at primavera and seeing just how well he performs and seeing the depths of his catalog is quite disappointed to see that he's kind of lost his way and i'm not too sure what it is i'm not too sure if it's um the fact that you know he's still moan he's still uh, mourning the the death of asap yams who was probably uh, more more important than people realize and what it was to the group overall how he was able to kind of take a back seat and kind of orchestrate um how everyone's project came out and the kind of timeline the schedules they had involved and if you look at what they do with the cozy tapes and how cohesive and how um set and how great that formula is and look at what they do individually it doesn't necessarily resonate that well and I, 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 I i'd i'd hope to i hope to understand maybe if it has something to do with that or maybe it's just to do with rocky himself i remember rocky him mentioning in the interview that he's just happy he's happy that he's made the money he's made right he's got the opportunity he's got now with modeling and designing and stuff and now music is just fun it's just experimental he can he just does what he wants to do right he's not necessarily trying to chase a sound or trying to chase popularity he just wants to create good music and that's one thing in general, but I can't help but think somebody that got that annoyed, you know that whole famous paparazzi shot where the photographers are screaming Travis at Rocky and he gets really annoyed that he wants to punch somebody. I can't imagine that animosity is from anything other than just com pure competitive spirit, right? These two artists who kind of generally people tend to say look like each other or might have the same similar sort of sound or maybe you're chasing the same sort of fan or once the same sort of fan listen to their music. I can't help but think a lot of that energy came from competitiveness. So to see maybe um, Travis go where he's going now, to see his album be received so well, to see the stuff that Sicko Mode has done, to see what he's going to be doing at the halftime NFL show, even though some work people on Twitter won't like it. I can't but think if you're Rocky that you might be a little bit, you might be a bit you know you, your nose might be a bit bent out of shape about how big of a star travis has become but i think maybe coming up with this new album is supposed to be tentatively might be called all smiles or something along those kind of lines um but it looks quite cool I, I love the look of the tour i think that's one thing that rocky's been smashing it maybe his projects have been a bit inconsistent maybe his sound hasn't really evolved as well maybe other people have come along and have taken what he's done and kind of run with it and done it in a much better way more like, you know, look at someone like Juice World, for instance. Would you say Juice World's a better rapper than Rocky? Probably. Would you say he probably makes better songs than Rocky? I don't know. Maybe because Juice World hasn't got enough skin in the game. He hasn't been involved in the industry as long as Rocky has been. Rocky has been able to survive for a long, long time. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of people coming up now who have kind of taken that sound and run with it. Trippie Red might be another good example. A few others coming up in the scene. But I think one thing that a lot of them aren't touching Rocky on is production. 
of course, live performance, like he's an amazing live performer because, you know, that era, you have to imagine that era of rap, especially Odd Future and ASAP Mon back in the day, all the videos I saw of them promote, um, performing were always at festivals, right? They were getting booked at festivals left, right and centre. So I think the ability to, the opportunity to go to a festival where you're going to see a lot of people playing in bands, right? Loves a live implementation. I think it really awakens this idea that you have to bring it on the stage, right? You have to be able to compete with uh, bands that are playing, right? You can't just go there and perform over an MP3 track. You have to bring more to the table. I think that allowed them to really separate themselves. Because you look at even ASAP 12, he was not really that well known in a group, but it's somebody who also has solid projects under his belt and also has his own brand going, also has his own kind of thing going. You look at what he does when he performs, like he's amazing. ASAP Ferg's really amazing live. ASAP Nas, even though he doesn't make as much music as he should do, he's really good live too. And that all comes from that training of that back in the day. So one thing they do have over a lot of these new generations is that training will be able to perform at most stages and also the production level of what they do of their tours and their merch and stuff and this intergeneration thing doesn't look any different to anything else i've seen it just looks fucking insane um so uh let me show this on screen so you've got an intergeneration tour that's happening now at the moment um with the whole crew get up on there <laughs> So you got here, you got um, you got screens, massive screens in the background. You have got cars hanging from the ceiling, similar to what um, well, not, well, there were hologram cars on, on Drake's tour bus. Tying with the testing theme, the crash tip, crash test dummies. You got Rocky on top of amazing. I think it's like a BMW M3, like an old school one that um, that Frank Ocean might have had on a couple of his his, his album covers. But it looks insane. It looks really really cool, man. Really really cool. I love the look of it overall. I think it looks amazing, production-wise. So yeah, this is one thing I don't think anyone's really test touching these guys on when it comes to production of the their shows, how they put them together, the performance. This looks incredible. That's well worth the money. And he's got a few of these guys on his uh, roster too. I think that Playboy Carty is also part of the tour, so it looks incredible. Um, that's one video that I thought looked really cool. There's another one as well. Let me get this off the screen. One more before I nip off for seven. But the Bushka, I'm um, shit, shit me look sounds good. I don't usually try and listen to, I don't usually try and listen to um, leaks or whatever. But this looks fucking awesome. So yeah, nice uh, stage outfit there from Rocky Two with a crash test dummy mask on. Again, just great production. I think overall, it's one thing that he's done really well in that regard. Hopefully, it comes to Europe as well. But it looks fucking cool as fuck. Probably the best track on the album, right? Praise the Lord with Skepta. Some people would say it's not even the best um, pre um, skeptic performance of this of that year, actually. And you think of the, those features that Skeptic's done, but it looks incredible. Really cool show. That's one thing that you can't really be moaning rocking. You're gonna get a really good show depending on where you are. So yeah, um, that's coming up. So I guess in, in conclusion, I guess it's probably interesting to see what happens in the next album. I think it's probably a lot more pivotable or maybe more important than people realize. Maybe not for Rocky. I think it'd be good to hear him in an interview, kind of speak about it candidly, like how he feel, what his position is in the overall general landscape of hip hop. Does he feel like he has to step up and have like, um, a, you know, a really put his flag in the ground and show how much better he is than all the other people coming around? Or is it the fact that, you know, he's got all these other things outside of music that are very um, fruitful for him, that are making him loads of money, he performs at festivals, like, you know, he's, he's touring consistently, performing all the time, he's modeling, he's got brand sponsorships coming out of his ass, like, maybe it's a case of just like, you know, music just isn't up that far up on his totem pole of making stuff. And maybe as well, just generally, Travis has got a bit of a cheat code, right? And the fact that he's been able, to, he's been co-signed by so many of the industries, you know, forebearers, and whether it's T.I. and Kanye and stuff, and the kind of stuff he's done on the producing side of it, maybe Travis was always destined to do that, right? And his tendency to be more involved in the hip-hop community and hang out with celebrities, you know, he's associated, he kind of, you know, he's married with Kylie and the fact that they've got a child together and the fact that Rock is a little bit still underground, he still hangs around with a kind of, you know, with the quote unquote, with the with the gut, you know, with the with the guys in the slums, right? He's still a bit more, you know, down to earth in that regard. Maybe that's why he hasn't necessarily popped. But let me just see what happens. I guess I still think it's a, a really important time for Rocky next album. I think that really see because again, like I said, testing was a very very underwhelming. I'm really eager to see what he does next going forward in terms of sounds and approach. But you know, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. We never know about these things, do we? We just never know.